Welcome, 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 everyone. I'm so excited uh, to do tonight's class. Tonight's going to be a fun experience. So I was telling everyone earlier, and I will say this again, so it's on the recording. I'm tired of dancing with the free stuff, and I want to put this on YouTube. So for those of you watching the recording, when we get ready to dance, you're going to have to dance to your own music because I'm going to pause the recording while we dance so we can dance to fun music. And then I'll resume the recording so we can hear everything. And then at the end, I'm going to do it again when we dance at the end. If we, I think we will, we will dance. So that's my plan. We're going to try this. There's always a replay, Candy, always. So, um, and this, and they'll be up on YouTube. I'll send them out in a news or in a email pretty quick after. So you can find it. And I probably will be using this one. You'll probably see it many times before it's all over with. So, all right, if we're ready. Let's try this. We're gonna call in sacred space. For those of you that might be new, we always do this beforehand. We wrap that sacred geometry that is the elements around us before we get started. So, and we do it in a wheel, which is also sacred geometry. So let's just take a minute, take a big deep breath, maybe take another one <laughs> and just drop that main central circuit, that grounding line that comes down through the top of your head, all the way down through your body, down into the earth, drop your roots down. Ah, feel yourself being held. Mm. Now take a big deep breath in. Draw that earth energy up through your body. Send it all the way out and up, all the way up, 12th dimension and higher to divine creator, creatrix, divine source. Take a big deep breath and call that energy, that cosmic energy, down through your body. Send it all the way down to the earth, activating that as above, so below flow. Connecting with that flow, breathing in and breathing out. Activate the as within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Moving to the north, we welcome Mother Earth. We give thanks for that solid foundation we stand upon. Moving to the south, we welcome water and clear, clean, current emotional energy. We welcome love, joy, flow, abundance into our circle. Moving to the west, we welcome air and mind, focus, clarity, all of our guides, angels, and helpers. Moving to the east, we welcome fire, passion, that spark that lights you up. We welcome that energy into our circle. Moving to the center, we welcome our divine feminine and our divine masculine in sacred right relationship. We call that energy down through our bodies. We call up Mama Gaia to pull and magnetize that energy through us. And we welcome our own sweet, extraordinary souls into this circle. We ask that all of these energies be with us, pray with us, dance with us for our mutual benefit. Uh -oh. Okay, I'm pausing the recording so that we can dance. Those of you at home, turn on your own music. Here we go. Uh, all right. That was fun. 
probably dates me a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's not the first time I've danced to that song. Um, and it's indicative of what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm very, very excited. So welcome to Light Infusion 101. But first, we need to talk about what's going on out there because it's a little important. Um, most of you probably already know the stuffs. So I'm just going to highlight it. We just had, actually, it was my grandson's birthday, 12-12. We had a new moon in Sagittarius. And if you've been around the Zodiac block a little bit, you know Sagittarius is all about expansion. This is a fun new moon. So everything is supported right now higher education, all the things that we all are wanting to do, learning, teaching, exploring, going places, delving into all kinds of philosophy and studies, um, adventures, celebrating, which is what we love to do around this time. And it's very, very exciting. There are a lot of other planets that are supporting creation. So you could create just about anything right now and be supported doing it. As long as you don't get stuck in your ego. That is the good news. And there is this, you know, I could, sometimes I look at astrology and it feels like the wise aunts and uncles that are kind of trying to get us to behave. So guess what? Y'all know what happened yesterday. Mercury's in retrograde. But get this. It went into retrograde in Capricorn. What's Capricorn about? Planning. Planning for the next seven generations structure, form, getting our act together. So this growth and this thing that we want to create, where it's almost like we're being told, here's all this creative juice. Sit your butts down, stay home, and dream it in. Plan it. Do the thing. And there's aspects in this retrograde that support that. We have all this really good Jupiter energy and all this really good Venus energy and Venus and Pallas Athena are like practically on top of each other. So it's all about creativity and relationships and finances, planning your money. I mean, all those things that those planets support are in a really good spot for us to, I mean, no more excuses. It's like, this is the moment that we can do all those things that we've been talking about, that we, yeah, I probably need to do, I really want to do that. Now's your chance. And we'll ice this little cake with the fact that Mercury's going to go direct on New Year's Day in Sagittarius. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So there's your little astrology lesson for the evening. Um, it gives us a lot of time to ponder the desired outcomes for the next year. And, you know, we could even plan those concrete steps to get those creations into form. And we could do it the way we've always done it, which is here. This is where we live. So from our ego, from everything we can see in front of us and everything we've been programmed to believe, that really hadn't been working that well for us. We could keep doing that. But I'd rather you try something different tonight, just for fun. We'll just try. 
what if we planned from our soul's perspective? And why would we want to do that? Why couldn't we just harness this energy and, you know, seize the moment and make what we want? Well, there's lots of reasons. I chose to be positive about this. So your soul knows a lot, a lot more than your ego does, even though your ego may not think so. It knows who you really are. It knows why you're really here. It knows how you originally planned to do the thing for why you're really here. And it knows other things. <laughs> Your soul knows that there is a love that's bigger and deeper and wider than we can ever take in with our little brains and our little minds and our little hearts even. And I'm to the point now where I can feel it a lot and it's indescribable. It's too big. It's real. And you can feel it too. It's tangible. And it's not about religion. And it's not about gods and goddesses. It's about real, tangible, vibrational energy. Prana. Life force. Alive and real. It's what keeps you alive. The only thing I can try to compare it to is if any of you are mothers and that heart opening that you would do anything, move heaven and earth for your kids. It's that kind of big love that we came from and that oh, loves this planet, loves us. And it's concentrated into a tiny little seed, the seed of you. It's your origination point. It's where you came from, that tiny little cell of life that literally lives, still lives inside your heart space, physically. When we talk about this, or at least myself, when I would be taught or we'd hear about these kinds of things, I always thought my soul was out there somewhere and that all of that was out there somewhere. And it's not, it's right here. In order for our lives to work, we have to go back to that origination point. We have to experience the remembering of who we are at soul level. The light of that, the feeling of that, the knowing, the wisdom of that. Why? I'm just going to be honest. This is why. And this is why we need to do it now. So we can access all 12 dimensions of our being. So we can utilize the powers and capabilities stored there. So we can do what we came here to do to save our planet. We've been playing. We've been skating. We've been sliding around on two dimensions thinking that's all we had. So here's the teaching part of the class. Just sit back and listen. Let your heart listen. And just ponder. 
So here's what I understand is truth right now. You are a 12 dimensional being having a 3D experience. And what you, we have chosen to understand is that only certain levels of understanding and capacity are available for us to access. Anybody that can get any more than what the average person gets is psychic or magic or something. There's something different about them. Mm -mm. That's not the truth and it never really was the plan. The original plan was for you to have access to all the gifts embedded in all your dimensional selves. So you could heal your planet and restore your home. And in fact, all of us here, from here, are the only humanoid species capable of this. Our DNA is special. There's nothing like it anyway. So no matter who shows up here, ours is different because we have access to all of this. But we've been programmed to believe that we only have access to maybe two dimensions, which basically amounts to what we see in front of us. And right now, that's pretty scary some of the time. It's not, that's not true. It never was true. And many of you know this now because many of your dimensions are waking up. And if you don't know what that is, if you don't understand what's happening, you may think you're crazy. And it can also, when you don't know what to do with it, when you don't know how to drive the car, it can create all kinds of symptoms in your body, in all your bodies, your emotional, your spiritual, depression, high sensitivity, all kinds of medical reactions. Reactions to what, you ask? Light. More about that soon. But what I want to assure you of is that you're fine. But keep breathing because there's more truth. Magic is real. Only probably a better term would be spontaneous awakening. There's been lots and lots of light hitting this planet and it's gradually increasing for a reason. And as it does, it's waking up those dimensional selves of yours. And so a lot of them want to come and play and join the party. And that would be great. That's what we need. But when all the light begins to pour in, I've been telling people the cockroaches scatter. All the things that you didn't really want to look at, <laughs> all those unhealed trauma parts that maybe you thought you'd move beyond, I keep finding those. I'm like, how could I have gone this long and not fixed that? All, all of that, your light starts to try to shine through your trauma. Ugh. And when that happens, all of that unhealed stuff can surface in very strange ways. And we're seeing evidence of it everywhere. So we need some healing. And I'm calling it light infusion therapy. But before we do that, we have to go meet our soul. Now, some of you, if you watched the opener of the summit, you got a taste of this. We're going to do it again. There's going to be a little more. Um, but we're going to go there. Because, here's why. The only way you know, there was like a, can you imagine 
what would happen to us? If we had access to all 12 dimensions and yet we were still operating from here, we probably wouldn't even be here. We'd have blown the place up a long time ago. So the stop gap, the rule is we got to start at one. We got to start at first dimension and go up. Now, I want to ask you, how many people, how many of you have been taught about first or second dimension other than Oh, that's your connection to your family of origin, blah, 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 blah. That's not your first dimension. Your first dimension is your soul. And until we know our soul intimately, until she slash he is the one that gets to drive the car, we don't get access to all the rest. Thankfully, we don't because we wouldn't know what to do with it. We've obviously proved that to ourselves. I've been listening to Elizabeth Wood. She's one of the presenters. She's been a presenter on all of my summits because I just love her. And she's so wise, so, so wise. And so I learned a lot of this from her. And the biggest thing that really impacted me was the original cell. So it's like your mama and your daddy got together and whoo, there was that Visica Pisces and you dropped in that little soul light that you dropped in, dropped into the planet. And then around that little soul and all these cells that start to show up, the planet has been calling you. You don't get to come here unless you're invited. So you were dearly desired and wanted before you ever landed. So you land. And then all these little cells start forming around you. You know, first there's one, and then there's two, and then there's four. And that forms your heart. That's the first organ that forms. Mm -hmm. Our heart doesn't regenerate. All of our other, the only other organ in the body that doesn't re regenerate are the lenses of the eyes. That's a story for another day. So, all those cells that were there when you got here, they're still in here. You know, and maybe one or two might have bit the dust. Others that were there at the beginning took their place. They all know you. They invited you here. They love hanging out with you. They're never going to leave you. You'll leave them. They won't leave you. And they know who you are they've got all the info all the goods and they have been pumping that information through your body all your life so gives a whole lot of new meaning when you say muscle test that's your body your body knows a lot more than she's been letting on so, because that piece of you is still alive and well, that place inside of you is the place where all of life begins. The God source, the spark, the divine is still happily alive in here even in those people that have covered it up really good. It's in there or they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be alive. And all of those same physical cells that welcomed your soul here, they're still in there too. They're all having a party without you. But if you check in, you can feel 
So let's find her. I want y'all to just close your eyes, put your hand on your heart, and just breathe. Drop in. Get quiet. And then drop in a little deeper. Get a little quieter. Ask to feel your soul. Ask your heart to remind you, to help you remember her or him. Connect with that just a little bit. And just notice what you feel. Even if you don't feel anything, just be there. Feel all of us. Hmm. What does it feel like? Go really deep. This is where your soul, the part of you that really knows, lives. So I'm going to take you on a little journey so you can get to know your soul a little better. I want you to just imagine a room a cute little room in your heart. Maybe your soul is sitting on the couch. There's a window that looks outside at the starry sky. Your soul likes to remember where it came from. Hmm. And there's a door in this room. And I want you to just go open it. When you open it, it'll be kind of bright because it's a spiral staircase made of light. And I'm going to invite you to go up that spiral staircase. And just circle around and around. And pretty soon you're going to leave the room. You're going to pop out into the expanse of space. And it gets lighter, gets darker, and then it gets lighter. As you move up the dimensions of you, you just keep spiraling. All the way up, all the way up. And the higher you get, the lighter it gets. By the time you get to those upper dimensions, you can barely make out forms, but you can feel. And there's so much love there. So I invite you to just kind of be in that for a minute. Feel it. And eventually, you can make out a form that comes towards you. And it's your soul. And she or he may look all kinds of different ways. It's your choice because it's you. Some might call this part of you your I am presence. 
It's the part of you that knows your divine origination point. That remembers the love that created everything. So just take a minute with your soul. Let them love on you. That's the thing about this place. Pure, unadulterated love. No judgment. No, you should be doing better. They just love you. So talk to her. Ask your soul anything you want to ask her. I keep calling it her. There might be some hymns out there. Take a breath. Just take in as much of that light as you can. And thank your soul for showing up, for giving you this experience. And remember that you can and should come back and visit periodically. And then begin to go back down your spiral staircase. Very slowly, taking in the sights, noticing what you see, round and around. Things may look different than they did before. Spiraling all the way down down through the roof, down, down, till you come back to the door and your little soul plops herself on the couch. So just sit with that. The soul that you met is still alive and well right under your hand. What does your soul want you to know? What does your soul want you to know about love? What flavor of love did your soul come to bring to this planet? My guess is your soul is going to show you. I get it, Linda. If you awaken your soul, all those things you're afraid of coming back down will be remedied. And if they're not, you won't care. You'll be having a love affair with your soul. So I'm going to invite all of you to just kind of, you can be in that space. You can keep your hand on your heart if you like, but you can Open your eyes and come back a little bit because I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, you lived in light. And that light 
was full of love. And it was all you knew. And as you lived there, you became enamored, enchanted, if you will. <laughs> With going to another place. A place where you could share and shine your light. Where your light could be seen and enjoyed. Because everyone knows that if you just stay surrounded by light, you can't really see much. Your soul gets bored. <laughs> so, you decided to visit Earth. You would look down. Oh, she was so beautiful. And you knew you had to be invited. So you waited patiently, patiently, patiently. You waited. She was one of the most beautiful places in the galaxy. You were so excited. You knew you had grand things to share and also many things to learn. And you wanted to do that. And soon, you got the call. They tapped you on the shoulder. You're, you're up. It's time to go. So you brought your bright, shiny self down here to shine. You found the perfect spot. Exactly right for all you had planned. And you landed in the middle of a beautiful forest. And a very loving gardener caught you. She held you and prayed over you and blessed you. And very lovingly planted you in the soft soil so you could grow. It was quite strange, this wondrous place you found yourself in. It felt so different to be confined to that tiny little space. You were so used to expanding your light, shining so bright. But you loved the beauty and diversity of this amazing place. And so you began to let your light expand and grow inside your body. And grow you did. Expanding your little seed self, your light, the literal essence of who you are, seemed to expand into all the cells of this new body. And it made you bigger. And this continued. And you started to acquire a bigger body. And while all this was happening, you really had no idea what you wanted to grow into. But you knew you wanted to shine. You wanted to grow. And you wanted to radiate your light. And the gardener, she would come regularly and sprinkle you with love and light and prayers so that you would soon grow into a beautiful tree of light so you could shine your light on others. But your soul wasn't quite prepared for everything it was going to find here. Things aren't 
all goodness and light like we thought. Sometimes it feels like a war zone down here. And then there's the dishes and the kids and the laundry and the dinner and work. How are we supposed to do all that and shine? Well, this is what I've come up with. I call it light infusion therapy, restoring our connection to the human soul. And if you choose, I'm going to invite you to be guinea pigs tonight and feel what this feels like. And I'm way open to hearing back and seeing what happens when we begin to actively connect ourselves to our soul on a regular basis and begin to turn on those light bodies in a good way, in a, a wise, smart, efficient way. So I'm going to do a little activation. For some of you, it may sound familiar, may sound like other things we've done. Um, but just by way of definition, I'm going to use some words that you might not recognize. So for instance, I'm going to use the word source light to refer to your soul, your I am presence, that light that lives within you. And I do that because it's a different word than all the other words so that it won't pick up any weird information that we've used before. This is your source light, not anybody else's, not anything out there. It's yours. It's what you know personally, the goodness that lives inside of you. So I will say things like connect to your source light. So I want you to understand that. I also am going to say terms like um, source light net. Now, some of us know the thing that created everything is Indra's net. And yeah, there is a big light net grid, whatever, out there. Um, we've all ripped our third, third eyes open and have pulled everything in from that net. But what you may not know is that in second dimension, you have your own untainted, unconnected, unless you open it and invite things in. And that's where I want you to connect, not to anything out there, just to yours, just to that place that knows the spiral staircase to the place where you just went that is your own personal connection to the big love that created this planet and created you. So nobody else's information but yours. So when I say the words, I wanted you to understand what I was talking about. I'm not taking you and by the way, that net that I was just told you about, that's second dimension. We'll learn about that next time. But for right now, you just connect here. And I'm going to do the little treatment. You can close your eyes, open to receive, treat it like a meditation or a healing or an activation. And just lay back and relax and notice how you feel in your body. Notice what happens when you connect here. I ask to place the vibration 
of receptivity and openness in each of your individual source light nets. I ask to place all the light symbols in each of your individual source light nets in the appropriate formation for this light infusion. I ask to place the vibration of your desired outcome for this light infusion in your individual source light nets. I ask to activate all 60 light vibrations, completion, and mastery in each of your individual source light nets. I ask that we all connect to our personal source light net and that we connect to and through the source light net of Gaia. I invoke receptivity, openness, and light. In each, or excuse me, at each of your head centers, heart centers, creation centers, and feet. So we're just going to breathe into that. And feel that activating in your body. I invoke five blessing light symbols at your head center, your heart center, your creation center, and your feet. Just going to take a minute. I ask for source light to flow through, ignite, and activate all these symbols. And I request the following outcomes. Be placed in our source light nets. Maintained connection to our own personal source light. Let's breathe that in. Restoration of balance to our material world in all aspects.
receive the new light coming in, in a way that serves us and those we love. Open-hearted joy for all beings. And of course, your own personal desired outcomes. Our request is that those outcomes be expressed in the appropriate ways through each of our Source light nets. I ask to enlighten, embed, and activate the following vibrations in your source light net. Peace. Love, abundance, and synchrony. So just feel those wash in. Breathe them in. I ask that you hold, emanate, and radiate this vibration of light. I invoke integration and completion. At your navel, feet, and crown. As it is intended, so it is. So everyone can just take a minute. Maybe roll your shoulders a little bit. Let all of that sink in. Source Light School is coming in 2024. There's going to be a lot more of this. So watch your inbox. But what I want us to do now is integrate this by dancing. So you can't get out of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading the, reading the chat. Michelle says, felt my third eye open, then felt swirling energy around my feet. Then the dog came and licked my feet. So I think it works. All right. I'm going to pause the recording so we can dance. And I want all of you to just slowly get up and move. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, 
If you have questions, y'all know where I am. If you have responses, if you get have experiences that you want to share, I am way open to hear. Hmm. All of you have a lovely, lovely solstice and holiday. I give thanks to the elemental forces for holding space for all of us. As long as you have. <laughs> and I give thanks for these amazing light warriors that are doing their work. And I close this circle in the light. All right, y'all. I will see you next month, if not before, hopefully before. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can get out of here. All right, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to stop the share. Look at all of you. Look at you. So beautiful. All right, now I can get out of here. Love you all. See you soon.